Ah, bonjour, and happy anniversary of Who Killed Markiplier. And happy Friday the 13th. I wanted to take this time to go ahead and release a video that I thought would be fitting for the anniversary of the final episode's release of Who Killed Markiplier. For those of you that don't know, I produced Who Killed Markiplier, as well as playing Benjamin Butler, the butler in the series. It was quite an experience and it was a really fun time figuring out how to do a first person perspective murder mystery in a unique way, much like we did with A Date with Markiplier, which I also produced. That said, between finding the location, getting the actors, making sure that there was breakfast, and planning for numerous things that went wrong, including the stunt and getting a crash pad in the doorway, it was quite an experience. Along with having to do all of that and then get in character, get my hair done properly, to be able to play the role was such a blast. It was something we shot in a short amount of time and Mark was editing while we were on tour and posting the episodes while we were on tour. That was the You're Welcome Tour, a tour we did all across the United States and Europe and even went to Australia. But anyway, a few years after the fact, I don't know if it was two or three, I did an interview where Benjamin Butler was looking for a new job after the experiences of Who Killed Markiplier in which his master died. Master would be so displeased if only you were still alive. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoy Twitch interviewing me for a new job, or should I say interviewing Benjamin Butler.
much. Um, uh, please take my coat. I'll, I'll be right in in a second. They're in the other room? Oh, perfect, perfect. Oh, thank you. Ah, bonjour. Thank you so much for meeting with me and arranging this interview. It's so such a pleasure, such a pleasure. Um, uh, if we could, could, uh, may we sit? Welcome, welcome. Uh, uh, thank you again for having me here. It's it's truly an honor. Uh, it's, and please, please excuse my slight tardiness. Um, I tried to arrive right right on time, and um, I know you wanted me here about five minutes early, but I do apologize. Um, I've just been... It's really difficult having this first interview since, since the tragic loss of my master. Oh, he was such a wonderful, wonderful man, and I truly, truly appreciate it. But, um, I, like I said, I, I, you know, I tragically lost my master, as you're well aware, and, and this is my first true opportunity to sit down and have an interview. It's been months, and, and it's absolutely dreadful just sitting around twiddling my thumbs. I really need to get to, to work again, and I, I'm so thankful that that you invited me here for an interview. It's, it's, it's such a pleasure, it's such a pleasure to meet you. So um, without further ado, I, I understand you, you have some questions and, and some various things you wanted to inquire about, hence why you invited me here for the interview. Um, I just wanted to tell you how thankful and how excited I am for the opportunity uh, just to apply and, and be interviewed for this position with you. So thank, thank you so much again. Um, so if we could, uh, let's let's get right into you, um, Benjamin. What what do I remember? I I know what I know what not what you're referring to. I I've never met you um, until just now, and and I remember everything like about my history, where I come from, my family, long line of butlers, and all of that. But and long line of servants. My mother was a maiden, and and it's just. It's just, you know, I, I don't understand what you mean by what, what do I remember? What, what do I... I remember as much as I could possibly, possibly remember um, in, in any sort of circumstance. So I, I know not what you mean by what, what do I remember. Yes, I understand, I understand. Um, uh, yeah, yes. Yes, sure, sure. Yes, I I am a butler. Yes, yes. I prefer Benjamin, if you would, please. I prefer Benjamin. Um, yes, I n understand you did a background check and you saw you saw that poor thing that did occur. Um, yes, yes. I was arrested for public nudity. It's not something I'm really proud of, but. It did lead me to my last master. You want, okay, you want the full story? Well, it was back when I was in, in university at the International School of Fortitude, um, where, servitude, excuse me, I always say fortitude, I don't know why. But um, it happened, you know, as, as a distinguished butler, as a distinguished member trying to be the best that I could possibly, possibly be, for all masters now and in the future and all of that, I went to butler school, um, having been pushed there by my mother and father, who, as as I'm sure you're well aware, are originally from England, um, where they served the queen. Yes, they were butlers and the maid to the queen, the queen and king of England. And um, after the sad, tragic death of both the queen and the king, and their their daughter wasn't particularly fond of of my parents, and so they sent my parents away. We we came here to the United States, and it was it was a, a interesting tale. Um, but you were asking about the public nudity. So the reason I got arrested was when I was in the school for fortitude. 
Servitude. I keep saying fortitude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just so stressful. The first interview in years. And, well, like I said, I was arrested for public nudity. And I was in school, this university, International University of Servitude. And I was applying to and pledging to the most prestigious servitude fraternity that there is. Beta Epsilon Tai Gamma Epsilon Pi Zeta. Butlers, for short. And, well, in the initiation rituals, every top fraternity and sorority do an annual naked run. And only one pledge gets elected for this annual naked run, and it seems like every year somebody gets arrested. Well, it was a tragic tale that I was the one arrested, but I wasn't originally the one to be arrested. The first person to be actually arrested was my previous master, Mark. He, he ran in that, that, that long, naked run, and I approached the cop and took his place, and, and that's how me and Master Mark apply. Uh, that's how we met. It was during the naked run. Yes, I understand we've seen each other naked. It's no big deal. That's what butlers are there for. You know how many times he passed out drunk? And I had to dress him into his pajama pants to put him into bed? Oh, the sheer number of times. I couldn't even tell you, but such tragedy. Such tragedy was his passing. But yes, that's, that's how I was arrested, was in, in the pledge of the naked run at university. Do I sell cocaine? No, I picked up the cocaine from the pharmacy. Um, it's, it's a great medicine. It works really well to pick you up for the morning after. It's also great for colds and so many other things. Um, I do not sell cocaine or any, any drugs. I'm not a pharmacist, I'm merely a butler. If you had three wishes, three wishes. If I had three wishes, hmm. I, I don't know. I, I would wish that my master hadn't passed. I hate that that's always my answer. But that would be the primary thing, was I would wish that my master hadn't passed. I would wish that nobody would feel any harm and everyone would have the opportunity to have a beautiful, wonderful butler to serve them at their home and take care of everything. And the other thing that I would that I would wish deeply for would be would be for everything just to be clean all the time. I don't know how much time I waste just cleaning up after that stupid chef. That chef is outrageous and he does not clean. It's absolutely dreadful. Absolutely horrendous. Me and that chef no. I don't want to talk about him. I don't want to talk about him. No. So, more questions? Please. I understand. I understand. It's difficult to think of them on the spot. I thought you were prepared for me. I thought you were ready and rearing to go for this beautiful, wonderful interview. Oh, Mark, he wasn't at the School of Fortitude, he was school at Mastertude. He was University of Mastertude. The School of Fortitude is the most prestigious. It's the Harvard, Harvard University of Servitude is where I went. And he went to the prestigious Harvard School of Mastertude, where you learn how to be a master, um, which I don't understand why they have a school for that, because all they do is just party and make sure that we do everything. But I guess, I guess it's about making sure you don't overpay people. I, I presume that that would be the reason there's a school of mastitude. Yes. Mm hmm Sure. Most, interestingly enough, the most problematic task? That's quite a good question. Hmm. I would have to say it goes back to that time where Master filled a bathtub 
full of hot cocoa. I don't understand why he wanted the world's largest cup of hot cocoa, but there was just powder everywhere, whipped cream. He wanted me to spray him down, but of course I would not do such a thing. He learned how to clean himself. Now, he might not have been good at it. He stunk, but he was... He was a good friend. He kept... He thanked me for when I did things, and he drank with me and allowed me to enjoy parties instead of just serving the entire time. It was quite wonderful, actually. Yes, he was my only master. That's the only master I've had. Um, because he hired me right out of university. <laughs> Strange headaches? Flashbacks? What are you, a doctor? I, I have not had any really big flashbacks or headaches or any problems whatsoever. I, I have not. Um, I have, however, I, I do have some, some retention. As you know, my master was murdered. But that's the only thing that's been bothering me. As long as no one says the word murder, I'm completely, completely fine. I promise. How did... I did not break the vase. First of all, I did not break the vase. It was shot by the colonel in his drunken, rageous stupor. Colonel has always been an issue. He's always been outlandish and full of himself, and what you don't know is... The colonel owed Mark a lot of money. A lot, a lot of money. The colonel essentially owned, owed him his life, but I won't, I won't get into the details of that. Not at all. Not at all. How do you know about the wine bottle? Excuse you, how do you know about the wine bottle. The only person that was there with me at that moment was the DA. How do you know? How do you know about the wine bottle? That is my question for you. Oh, you spoke, you spoke with the DA and the detective who apparently the DA told, oh, oh, uh, yeah, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um. I have never uncovered the mystery of the wine bottle, but I am certain that the person who broke that bottle, who made such a mess, is such a monster that they're the one who killed Sir Mark. That has to be the explanation. That's the only possible reason for that mess. And he would have been so upset with me that that was not cleaned up the night before. He did have me drinking with him again, but... That's no excuse. He always said that is no excuse. That I should work drunk because my job was 24-7. I got to live in the same house. I got everything taken care of. Absolutely unacceptable. That's why I was so emotional. I know the DA told you about how emotional I was, but that's why I was so emotional. That's why it was so... I was so beside myself. Because Master couldn't even be displeased in me. I had to be displeased in myself. <laughs> it was so awful. So awful. I could just buy another wine bottle? Excuse you, that was a 1810 Chardonnay. That was an 1810 Chardonnay. The one of a kind wine. Those bottles alone, even when empty, are worth millions. Absolutely. That master would have been so upset that that bottle broke. How do I feel about death? Really, at a time like this, you're asking me about death. I don't see how this pertains to the job. 
I don't see how this pertains at all to the job. I do not appreciate that question. I am still mourning the loss of my master. The Colonel? I would rather not see him, but I have to see him every few months. Because Master, of course, wrote me into the will, and I have his house and all of his funds, but I have to see him ever so frequently was the, the one stance on there to check up on him. And he, he has gone mad. The Colonel is absolutely insane. He doesn't believe anything that happened that night was real. He doesn't believe anyone was dead. Mark died. And he laughs and lives life to his fullest and just is so happy-go-lucky about it. Excuse you, that is just not right. That is why, I, and I don't believe the colonel killed him, but that is why I don't trust him. H how long ago? Well, last October. It's almost been a full year. Almost. Not quite there. But it's been close. It's been close. Have I seen anybody that was at the party? All these questions that are not pertaining to my ability to be your butler. I don't understand why you are asking me such intrusive questions. I feel like this is, this is a scapegoat. You're trying to accuse me of the murder of my master. Is that, is that not why I'm here? No, it's okay. I really hope you're not taking my outbursts. This is against this job. I really need this job. I really need this job. I really need this job. No, I have not been employed since there. I, I do want to apologize for that. There's there's a big absent gap in my work history and and I hope you understand that I was so busy mourning I couldn't I couldn't pull myself to leave the house. I couldn't pull myself to go out and try and find a new master. Mark was just so wonderful. He was a glorious master. Sure, he was getting into some weird stuff at the end of his, towards the end of his early passing, but he let me do the things I wanted to do and be, enjoy life with him for the most part. Obviously, the last few months were just weird. He stayed hidden from me. He wouldn't let me even touch him. He didn't want me to shake his hand or anything, everything. That's why he had me wear gloves all the time. Yes, after watching my, my parents my parents work in servitude, there's nothing more glorious than being able to serve somebody else and take care of somebody else. It's truly the noble work, and it's all I've wanted to be, to live up to my parents' expectations and to be the best butler in the world. And I do believe I had accomplished that with Mark. But then now I'm considered a terrible butler because of his death. They're blaming me, of all people. How dare they? How dare they? When I have free time? Of course. Well, it depends on what I'm doing. Usually, I don't have much free time. My free time is spent sleeping or cleaning. But I suppose... I do enjoy a nice brisk jog. It just reminds me of a really joyous occasion in my past. I do like a nice jog. How many years as a butler? Oh, many years. I mean, I graduated from university, uh, the Harvard School of Servitude, back in, what was that? 1890? Yeah, that sounds about right. In 1890. No, that was when I was born. How dare I? I that was, excuse me, 19... 19... Wait, my math is just a little weary. Hold on, give me a sec. Do you have some water for me? Could I perhaps have a glass of water? 
uh, something that you could parch my thirst and, and take care of everything. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Mm. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the water. Thank you. Much appreciated. That's good water. Well, I was born in 1901. I graduated university in 1926. So, I was 25, yes. So I've been, been a butler for many years. It's been, I wanna say, five years. Five years, roughly. I've been a butler. What are my qualifications? Graduating top of my class at the school of butlery. Well, the school of servitude within, within the school of servitude is the butlery. Top of my class. I have my five years of experience as well known as the greatest butler to have ever lived in Butler Magazine. I have a lot, come from a long history of butlers and it's been my life's work to be a butler. Those are my qualifications. Everything is spotless, everything is cleaned, full service. I'm a bartender, I'm a waiter, I'm a cleaner, I'm a friend, and I am a driver. Everything you could possibly need, I can take care of. If something were to happen to my, if something were to happen to you, are you, are you offering me the job? Oh, you're asking if something happened to you and you had hired me. Oh, 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 I was, I was real excited. I thought you were going to hire me. Um, if something were to happen to you, I would, I don't know. I don't know you that well. Um, I would probably be upset. It depends on how long I'd been working with you and it would depend on how our relationship was, but I don't think I would be able to be a butler anymore. I would be blamed for it, and I would probably get thrown in jail just for the fact that two of my masters died under my watch in unusual ways, I'm assuming you die in unusual ways, because you're, you're young, you're young, you're, you're beautiful. I, I, would, I would mourn deeply if something were to happen to you tragically, deeply would be sorry. I would make sure your family was well taken care of, and I would I would arrange all of the funeral things and, and do everything I could to make it exactly how you would have wanted. When stressed, what do I do to relax? Well, I like to have a nice pint of good beer and maybe, maybe an occasional shot of scotch. If I'm feeling lucky and rather, rather fancy. In five years, I see myself working back up to my previous status as a butler, being the best butler to have ever lived. It's always been my dream to be known as the best servant any master could hope for, that people would bid for me to be theirs. What am I looking for, a master? Somebody who will treat me with proper respect thank me for the work that I do and allow me to become more than just their butler. I want to be their friend, their comrade in arms, so to speak. They should know I always have their back and I will absolutely keep everything under wraps. As long as you're very open with me and I'm privy to every detail of the house and every guest, I will make sure you are well prepared, well kept, and the best master you could ever be. I would make you a better person, to be completely honest. 
That's how good of a partner I am. <clears throat> Caring for pets. <sighs> well, I forgot to mention that I am also a certified pet groomer. Pets love me. I will take them for walks. I will do everything in my power to treat them just like they were my master. Manny's petties, beautiful bow ties, washes, baths, and plenty of playtime as well. Whatever those pets' hearts desired. I do enjoy animals, and animals like me. <sighs> oh, really? Please tell me more about yourself. I, I feel so rude that I'm the one answering your question. I want to hear more about you. How did you get get so so rich? How did you get so wonderful? Yes. Really? I never would have expected you to be in that kind of career. That's that's astounding. Oh, I'm touched. Thank you. I'm truly touched. Really? But you never crossed paths with S Sir Mark. Really? That's quite peculiar. Hmm. All right, if you say so, I believe you. I truly do. I truly do. Experience in the supernatural. Are you... I mean, my only experience was that night with Celine, and I still don't understand how she passed. I don't know what happened. I heard a door slam, and they said that she was gone. You know, she used to be, she used to be Master's wife, Master Mark's wife. Yeah, it was a tragedy. I mourned her death deeply as well. She was a very wonderful, kind lady, and I miss her very much. I miss her the entire time she had left Master and continued on with everything else. I truly do miss them. Greatest strengths and weaknesses. Now that's a classic interview question. I would say my biggest strength is that I am trained and considered an expert in the act of butlery. And my greatest weakness is that I, I spend too much time making sure everything is perfect. So much so that I don't always have time for myself. I want to make sure my master is so well taken care of that sometimes I do suffer from that and that would be my greatest weakness. How much pay do I require? Excuse me, you're the one who's, who offered me the job. You specified that pay would be to the level of expertise. Yes, yes. I mean, the pay that you posted in the, the flyer was, was adequate. I, that's acceptable. Yes. I, now, the one question I had for you is, did that include living with you? Because I don't really have my own way of getting about. I don't have much belongings other than, you know, my uniform. And you would, of course, supply gloves if you required me to wear gloves, correct? Oh, they're right over here? Okay, great, great. Oh, you even have wine out. Are you expecting other company later? Oh, you're right. I should not have asked that question. It is not fair in an interview. Fair enough. Home decorating. Really? Normally, normally a master wants, wants somebody else to do that. But I suppose I could try my hand at it. I could possibly come up with something that would be adequate. I mean, did you see, and I hate to bring this up, but the photos from the crime scene of the house, I did a little bit of help decorating that with master, but in the end he chose things that I wasn't particularly fond of. He always said he wanted the most expensive and best quality of everything, but the expensive part was the most important to him. 
Something about status and always being the best. Had to have a lot of stares. He truly was an odd man, more that I think about it, but he was a wonderful one. Oh, lived in Hoovertown. Really? Do you know somebody from Hoovertown? You do. And they say they've seen me or met me. I've never been to Hoovertown. Hoovertown is not a place butlers like to be. It's not, not a very friendly place for us in the servitude industry. It's just, I don't know, it's just a little bit dirty. That's all I can say about Hoovertown. Nothing against Hoovertown. Those people are lovely, but outside it's quite dusty and dirty and you know, when, when you have to wear white for the job, you don't like being around a lot of dirt, especially airborne dirt. It's just, just a little too much. Why did I apply? I need a job. I need money. I need something to do. I've been twiddling my thumbs. Yes, I know Master gave me all of his riches and all of his luxurious houses and all of his wonderful cars. Oh, just a good house. But no, I need something to do. I can't sit in that house any longer. No. Are you really following up with that question again? How dare you? Now, that is just rude. I do not sell drugs. I told you I am not a pharmacist. I am not a pharmacist. I get cocaine from the pharmacy, just like any other butler would to take care of his master. I do not sell drugs. I'm not licensed to do such a thing. Excuse you, following up with the exact same question. I already answered that. Are you, that makes it seem very accusatory and I do not appreciate it. Not one bit, not at all. I suppose I'll accept your apology. As long as you don't ask me that question again. Or any other question about something that was clearly illegal. You already have my background check. You checked with the DA. You've talked with them about the stuff that I, my last job. You've investigated me enough. Why are you senselessly asking me questions about drugs? Next thing you know, you're gonna ask me if I killed Mark. Pfft. Preposterous. Has my job gotten in the way of my personal life and relationships? I don't have an opportunity to have relationships. My job is everything to me. I meet wonderful people, but nobody wants to marry a butler unless it's possibly a maid or another female butler, so to speak. But I suppose you're correct. My job does get in the way of relationships and and other things that I would want out of life, which isn't that much, but being the best butler is the most important, you know. But, yeah, I suppose it does get in the way. Very interesting. Thank you for asking that question. That actually showed you're, you're interested in me more than just my services. I do appreciate that. If master despicable, you're gonna have to elaborate what what you mean by despicable. Yes, I'm I'm very loyal, but you gotta elaborate on what you mean by despicable. What do you mean by despicable? Hmm? What do you mean? Please tell me. Yes, I'll I'm all ears. Tell me what you mean by despicable. Okay. I suppose.
It would have to be depend on how much evidence there was. Because um, a crime such as... I'm not going to say that word. You know that triggers me. A crime to the most severe extent, if there's enough evidence to truly prove them 100% guilty, then I, I can't be loyal to someone like that. But I will be loyal to the end as long as they stay within the realm of rules and reason and treat people properly with respect and kindness like one is supposed to. A normal work day. Well, I usually would wake up bright and early, 4 a.m., you know, and I would start preparing a little bit of um, beverages, a various assortment of drinks, depending on what happened the night before. As you know, a seltzer with cocaine is perfect for the morning after, if you ask me. But it would depend on the circumstance, but I would make beverages. I would wait outside the rooms for people to awake and present them with drinks. Uh, if it was just you within your home, I would make sure that everything was ready for you. Uh, whatever you were wearing for the next day was put out. Um, and I would start cleaning. Um, generally, I would clean whatever was left over from the night before, which if you hired the same chef I worked with before, which I don't recommend, is a lot of dishes. Um, but uh, once you were out of bed, then I would immediately go to taking care of the sheets, making sure everything is put back where it's supposed to be, and obviously be on call at any point in time. All you need to do is ring the bell, and I'll be right there. So you, normally there's usually calls for me to serve breakfast. Uh, the next call would be, uh, then I would be back to cleaning, taking care of various things around the house, putting your affairs in order, which, um, taking care of your schedule, and if you needed to travel, I would drive you there, and, of course, wait in the car, and serve you lunch, serve you dinner, so really full service. My day is, revolves around you, so whatever you need really defines what my work day would be. Do I currently have a partner? No, no. I, like I said before, when you asked me about relationships, my work gets in the way. I have never, I have not met anyone at all. Um, I mean, if you present the opportunity for me to go to the, the Butler Ball, I would, would absolutely go to that and hopefully meet somebody. And maybe, you know, if they're of quality that you prefer, which if I like them, I would hope that would be the case, then of course that would be wonderful. That would be absolutely wonderful. Oh, what am I looking forward to with my life as a butler? Just serving, taking care of people. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, I would love to be able to take care of you and make sure everything went as smoothly as it could possibly be. It's the best part of my life is making somebody's life easier. It makes me so much happier as a person. And quite, yes, yes, quite simply put, I am one hell of a butler. You can count on that. Thank you. I do appreciate that compliment. It's very, very endearing to hear somebody who has read the article. Thank you. Bad guess. Of course I've dealt with bad guess. How do I handle it? Normally, it depends on what the master would like. Um, but normally, if they cross a certain line, I will kick them out and send them packing. And usually, that's discussed prior to, so that would be more determined by you than me. Which I would hope we reach good terms on that, because I do not want to deal with another colonel. Yes, the press around my master's death did disgrace me. It made me a fall from grace, and I was looked down upon. Um, I've heard, gotten many messages from alumni of my school and, and saying how, how disappointed in me they were. It really, I've been, I've been treated poorly when it, there was nothing that I did. Not a single thing that I did or could do 
in any way that would have changed the matter. It was a tragic incident that occurred. How? Oh, absolutely. I can clean anything. Silver, anything you can imagine. Of course I can clean it. I can make sure everything is clean, spick and spam, exactly how it looked when it was first purchased, brand new. So of course I can clean. Dealing with children, yes, absolutely. Um, mostly, most of my experience in dealing with children um, involves um, guests. Uh, I've never had a master who had kids, so I haven't been around them that frequently, but I do have significant experience. And at the School of Bartlitude, which, like I said, is a department under the School of Servitude, um, they train us properly on childcare. How to raise a child, how to make them proper, and to become a master, just like the mother or father. To ensure I'm comfortable in your home. Really? Really? Well, I would just like to have my own private quarters that only I can enter and exit. That's the only thing I ever ask. Is having private quarters. There's no, no entrance of any other guests. There's no admittance of you. Um, aside from when you would ask to inspect, I would happily accompany you um, there. But for the most part, that my room be left alone, nobody else has access to it without me present. Emotional assistance, absolutely. I can be a perfect shoulder to cry on. And I'm not a licensed professional in mental health or, or physical health for that matter. I'm not a doctor or a psychologist, but I have been told I'm a great listener and I give absolutely wonderful advice. Of course, that's always the job of the butler, to listen. To listen and do what is asked of them, and go on above and beyond the call of duty. That is how I will always work as a butler. My worst experience, really? It would have to be my, my master's death and the aftermath of that, all of the hate towards me as a butler. I didn't do anything wrong. It was just a tragedy. I didn't, I had no control over that. All of the guests were vetted. That's why I think I get the most in trouble for. I vetted every single one of them. I had met them all before, aside from the DA, of course, but I've hung out with the DA afterwards and they seem wonderful. Of course, that detective has always been a peculiar lad, but his background did check out. It did. I don't un still don't understand how all of his partners tragically died. Even even the and then oh yes, that's correct. The the detec the detective. I haven't seen the detective since then. Hmm. It's a fair point. Oh, you haven't even spoken with the detective. Hmm. He was hospitalized after the incident. Really? What incident? I didn't hear anything. Oh, we don't need to talk about that. That would probably be my worst experience, is losing my master. Days off. I take no days off. <laughs> you're, you're silly. If you're offering me days off, that would be much appreciated, but I don't know what I'd do with myself. What would I do, twiddle my thumbs? I'm doing that plenty, as is. That's why I need this job so much. That's why I want this job so much. It's so important to me to have something to do and somebody to take care of. Hurt by my past masters? No. In the master school, they don't mistreat people. I do a thorough. Like I said, I vet everybody. I even vetted you. I haven't met you, but I vetted you. You are... You are a distinguished individual with no history of violence or any issue. That's why I applied. You're a stand-up person. 
and I appreciate you very much. You seem to be a beacon of light and hope in this world. And that's, that's simply refreshing. That's something how dear Master Mark was. He allowed me to call him Mark instead of Markiplier, but he preferred when I said Master Markiplier, so. <sighs> working with Celine versus working with Mark. Well, I worked for Mark the entire time. It was just when Celine and them were together. Master Mark was so much happier when they were together. And Celine was such a different person than the last time I met her. They were so, so happy, so loving, so friendly. They grew up together. Mark, the Colonel, Celine. Celine and Mark would attach at the hip since they were kids. I've heard this story a million times. They were truly, truly made for each other. And I still don't understand what came to be that made Celine leave. Something had to have happened. And it was the one time that he sent me off is when she left. He was heartbroken. He felt betrayed because she left him for the colonel. And yes, they all three grew up together, but I don't, I don't see it. I don't see why Celine would have left Master Mark. I don't see it. Oh yes, I enjoy being a butler very much. Yes. I get to see the ins and outs of wonderful, wonderful people and take care of them and help them Expand and be the best person they can be, just like they helped me be the best butler that could possibly exist. Past co-workers? Oh, absolutely disliked the chef. That chef was preposterous. He was so rude to guests. I had to yell at him every single time there were guests over, and I always had to clean up after him. He was so mean. He always, he always went outside, too. What kind of chef goes outside and hangs out with a groundskeeper? Absolutely preposterous. A chef friends with a guy who plants flowers and digs in dirt? Excuse you. Chef is supposed to be of higher quality than that. And not that, not that groundskeeping is a poor job. It's just dirty. And frankly below below that of a butler how many languages am i capable of speaking of primarily english but i have i have the ability to dabble in some french with bonjour um uh some german guten tag and maybe a little bit of spanish buenos dias but very limited in all of those Leave abruptly when things don't work out as planned? No. I am always calm and controlled. No matter the situation. Broken glass, psh. Even if it's a million dollar wine bottle, it means nothing. But I have to clean it up and I feel for the master. It's called empathy. I'm trained to be able to listen and be there for all of those people. If I had any other job in the world, really, there is not a single job I can think of that is better proposed than being a butler. Not a single thing. What would you say would be better than a butler? Butler is the most prestigious honorable position in, in servitude, and I haven't seen anything else. What would I want to be, an actor? A mayor? There's too many responsibilities. I have responsibilities of one, one alone, and that's one person. A mayor has to take care of an entire town. Oh, psychics are fake. That's a whole bunch of hocus pocus. Yes, I like to do a little accent when I'm making fun of psychics. It's a wonderful time. Issues with gambling, excuse you. Only when it involves clothing. But that's just... Because the human body is a piece of art. And it's a beautiful piece of art. So I like to gamble. What of it? I don't lose that much money. 
I never dip into Master's hoardings. I want to do such a thing. But I do... I do like to dabble in a little bit of gambling. Something about the thrill of it. But I wouldn't say I'm addicted. No. I've never gone bankrupt. I've never run into money issues. Yes, I understand that's because the Master generally paid me to gamble with him, but that's beside the point. I don't have a gambling problem. Broken mirror? Excuse you have a broken mirror? That's bad luck. I happily replaced that. I didn't see it. I was in such a rush. I was in such a rush to make sure I got here in time. I did not want to be too late for our interview. This was important to me. But that is... I, I would certainly have that replaced. I didn't see it, and I apologize. I'm usually very detail-oriented, but I wanted to make sure I got here. You're still on that worst experience thing. It's a really difficult question. I mean, like I said, it was my master's death, but I guess it's, you don't count that. Um. Hmm. I guess it would have to be the one day the groundskeeper would not stop knocking on the door and wanting food. As if I was supposed to deliver him food outside to his shack. Absolutely dreadful. I, I do not leave the house. Unless it's to drive. But even then, that's just going into the garage. I am always within doors. Closed doors. Once in the car, then the garage door opens. Never outside with dirt. Too much of a hassle trying to get out those stains. I learned that the hard way. Sick on the job? I'm not allowed to get sick. <laughs> if I get sick, there is... I have a number of people I can call that can step in, but I do not get sick. I, and if I did, you wouldn't know it. Or when I did, I should say. But for you, I never get sick. I always work. Ex excuse you? Accusing me of leaving my post to get drunk the night the murder happened. I was told to enjoy the party. I was brought in. My post was not left. Not at all. The only thing there was that he told me to drink and entertain the guests. I did my duty. I did what I was told. I did not leave my post. Sure, I was a little hungover in the morning. I wasn't up at 4 a.m., but that's beside the point. Mark was fine the last time I saw him. He was completely fine and asleep. Yes, I would be I would be completely fine taking care. Are you chronically ill? Wait, are you saying you're chronically ill? What what kind of ill are you? I would happily run to the pharmacy right now. Anything I can do to help, absolutely, absolutely. If, if you were to offer me the job, I would be completely fine taking care of everything I could possibly do to make your life easier. If you're bedridden, that's fine. I have no issue and do not discriminate against anyone with disabilities, mental health, or any other issues. There is no discrimination against read, race, creed, gender, ge uh, sexual orientation, none of that. Everybody is a person and deserves equal respect and deserves the opportunity to have a butler. That's why that third wish would exist. I want everyone to have the opportunity to have somebody as wonderful as me to help them with their daily activities. Best memory serving the master. Oh. I would have to say it was the night of June 4th. It was actually quite, quite funny. Um, he had me run out and get fireworks as if we were late for the 4th of July, which I tried to tell him we weren't, but 
he had me run out and get fireworks, which of course no fireworks were on sale at that point. But I found one man and made sure and bought the fireworks. And when I get back, he was so apologetic and so thankful that he gave me a bonus. And we ended up sitting out back, just lighting off fireworks, just me and Master, and enjoying ourselves. No, there was no alcohol at that time. It was just, just two guys chilling, playing with explosives. And it was so much fun. When is my birthday? Excuse you. You know when my birthday is. It's in my background report. Shh. I had to submit my birth certificate. You asked for it. You know my birthday. I don't need to tell you. Yes, I do, miss. I do miss Master Mark very deeply. He was such a generous and upbeat man. Always ready to throw a party. Always ready to have so much fun. And always ready to have guests over. He treated even the chef with kindness and respect. And always brought something new to the table every day. Even when he got peculiar and stopped interacting with me as often as he used to. It's... It was still an absolute wonderful time with him. Absolutely. So, really, you have one more question. One, one very particular question. No, wait. Oh, you thought of another one. Okay. Completely understand. Completely understand. I'm excited for that. I'm excited to hear your question. Sure. Sure. Oh, Damien? Ah, uh, Damien. Damien was, was around, yes. Damien grew up with Mark as well. He's, he became a wonderful mayor, and they were really good friends as they grew up. But really, the, the biggest thing is they, they counted on each other most for their careers. Mark to, to make sure he could get the house and do various things that he wanted, and the, but, and the mayor wanted to appear well. They both had their secrets about each other, which I am not allowed to speak of, but they were both good friends. The mayor always was kind, respectful, and very proper. Anytime he arrived, he was dressed to the teeth and rearing to go. He loved being the mayor. He loved the people. He loved all of the people, including me. And it was very, very wonderful to have him be such a wonderful, wonderful guest when he did come over to the house. It was beautiful. He is an absolute pleasure. Yes. Biggest pet peeve would have to be cleanliness. Now, the master, I understand where I'm supposed to clean for the master, but not the chef or other servants. They are taught in their particular schools to clean up after themselves. It is not the job of the butler to clean up after the chef or the groundskeeper or anyone else thereafter. It is only the master that I serve. So my biggest pet peeve is the cleanliness of other people. So. All right, now you're ready for that final question. All right. I'll, I'm listening, I'll just. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. I understand. Right. Oh, completely. Completely. No, thank you for the interview. I, kn I know it's not over, but thank you. You presented the opportunity. You are presenting the job. That's all that mattered. And it is much appreciated to have somebody, somebody present the opportunity to somebody such as myself to be able to serve, protect, and do everything I can to make their life so much easier. Okay, final question. You say I might be upset by this question. Really? What, what could it possibly be, really? Did I kill 
My master, are you serious? How dare you? How dare you? I'm not stand for that. That is absolutely preposterous. I already told you there is no evidence of me tampering with anything. Yes, it's peculiar that he left everything to me. That was not my fault. I do not have... I'm, I'm not privy to his will. That was meeting with his accountant. And as you know... Well, not his accountant, but his lawyer. The DA even signed off on it. Excuse you. That is absolutely preposterous. I will not stand for this. I can't take this. That is rude and absolutely awful. How dare you? How dare you? But please, I, I do need the job, please. Um, ignore my, my outburst. I, I really need the job, but thank you and um, have a wonderful rest of your day. Buongiorno. Buongiorno.